What's going on guys? I got a huge update for you today regarding the 2017 iPhone, also known by some as the iPhone 8 or the iPhone edition coming later this year, starting with design. So based off of all of the leaked schematics, the actual phone leaks, case leaks, mold leaks, we have created this render to show you what the iPhone 8 will most likely look like coming later this year. Like it or not, we're just too far into the game where all of the leaks are supporting one another. And this is the design that they are all collaborating on saying it will look like this. Now, thank goodness the rear touch ID seems to have disappeared and that's the best thing about this. Otherwise, I don't mind the back or the vertical cameras whatsoever. I think it looks great. Uh, well, not great, but it looks different, I gotta say. So there's that, the new upcoming design. And before I go any further, guys, I just wanted to say, believe it or not, nobody claimed the black AirPods I was giving away in the earlier video. I mean, someone did win, I emailed them, I tried to get a hold of them, nothing. So you guys have another chance to win these, the black AirPods, sealed, never opened, basically got them because I completely forgot I ordered them. They showed up at my house and I no longer need them. So you guys have a chance to win this with this video. Like this video, drop a comment and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. And I'll be drawing winners very, very shortly for that. So stay tuned for uh, announcing winners for the black AirPods, super sexy. I recommend you guys do enter into the giveaway. So let's start with OnLeaks. OnLeaks has posted this schematic that gives us a, a much closer and more personal look at the inside and outside of the upcoming iPhone 8. Most notably, it doesn't have that fingerprint sensor that we saw in my last update video that everybody seemed to hate. So I'm exceptionally happy to see that go. The vertical cameras do remain. They are gonna be raised and sticking out of the actual design, but overall it's very consistent and close to what we've seen before. Several key features that we can learn from this schematic. The vertical cameras are here to stay. Everybody is reporting on them. Everybody is saying the vertical cameras will be happening. There are several good reasons for Apple to do it, including the AR and virtual reality capabilities. Basically, when you would go into horizontal mode with your iPhone, it'd be more capable for that with a headset or something like that. There might actually be some advantages to photos with that. Who knows? But the one thing we can all agree on with everybody is that those are here to stay. There's also a flash unit right between the cameras. That is a very questionable design change by Apple. Why would they put it in between the camera right there? It seems like a very bad thing to do as a flash could create glare when taking images, especially at night. I believe one of the Nexus phones in the past had an issue where that the flash was so close to the camera that it would just create this ghosting effect, a lot of exposure in the photo when you didn't want it. So we'll see what happens with that. Also in these schematics, we can see that there is a rounded circle in the very middle of the chassis. What could this be? What could it possibly be? We seem to think that it will be wireless charging as well as the entire internet. So we actually rendered up a couple scenes of what that would look like inside of the iPhone. My designer seems to think that the chassis will basically be uh, this flat metal surface with a cutout for the actual wireless charging pad. And that's just basically a general rendition of what that could look like. But wireless charging in general is pretty much confirmed for the upcoming iPhone. As the PowerMat CEO himself has said, it will be a standard feature in the upcoming iPhone. You know, no question about it. He was so certain of it. So it's not like anyone really doubted it was going to happen happen as there were so many rumors pointing towards it, but seems that it has been confirmed by many people. And the happiest change about the schematic, yeah, happiest for most people, is that the fingerprint sensor is gone altogether. That location was terrible for it, and it leads me to believe that Apple did one of two things. Either they did find a solution for implementing it into the display, or that they did put it onto the actual new longer power button, as it is about two times longer than the old one. We've seen that in a lot of these schematics, the power button for no reason just became longer. So I personally think that the Touch ID will go there as it seems too much of a hassle to put it into the display, or maybe it was just not possible with the technology they have right now and to release it in time for the September or October release, whatever that'll be. And Benny Agueskin did make some updated concepts based on these schematics. So just to give you a little bit of an idea from a different angle of how this iPhone could possibly look, this is what that's like. It's got the longer power button, the vertical cameras, that full screen display, and it's running sort of an iOS 11 hybrid just to show you what Apple could do with some of that extra screen space. And I'm sure you guys have seen Unbox Therapy did make his own 3D printed model of this iPhone based on Vania's actual schematics. They did work together on that and just wanted to give you a little look at that. It doesn't show us anything really that we haven't seen already, but it's kind of interesting to see it in a 3D printed perspective. And there have been a couple internal schematic leaks, which have detailed the A11 processor and the new logic board shape altogether. Although the interesting thing is it doesn't show the L-shaped battery here, which I thought 
that it would. Apparently it's gone in this one. I don't know what that's about. But the logic board does have an interesting shape. It's now a little bit different to accommodate for the vertical uh, dual lens cameras. And when Vania lined it up with the leaked schematics, it matched up pretty much perfectly. So we did render a couple of scenes to show you what that would look like in real life with the camera sensor right there. It all folds in together very nicely, very compact. Apple is really, really going for optimization of space. They're making things smaller, moving them around, just being really smart about the whole thing, probably to give you more battery life with how small the phone is. And a very interesting leak, something we don't see very often so far ahead of the release of the upcoming iPhone. An actual case and screen protector leak from KK Sneaky Labs. They show what the case would look like for the upcoming iPhone and it matches very, very well with the schematics and all of the leaks we've been seeing. It's got that cutout for the vertical dual lens camera. It also does have a much longer power button switch on the side as well as dual speakers on the bottom and the lightning port right there. And it does confirm that it doesn't have a Touch ID little ring in the back middle of the back of the phone, which is awesome again. <laughs> so the front screen protector also shows it is a full front display with a tiny cutout for an earpiece. It looks beautiful, but this is probably not to be taken seriously. I think a case manufacturer, third party, just basically saw these schematics and like, hey, what would it look like if we made a case and screen protector for these? And I think that's what they did. There's no way Apple leaked six months in advance their design and everything to the case manufacturers. No way, it's just too early, especially when Apple hasn't figured out everything themselves. So just thought it'd be interesting to show you that, but probably don't take that too seriously. Now Ming-Chi Ko has given us some details about the launch schedule of the upcoming iPhone. He said that it will be launching alongside the iPhone 7S and 7S Plus in September. So they'll be announcing it at the stage together with an extreme shortage of supplies. So you might be able to get one, but a very, very small amount of people will only get one because they will have almost no supplies for this thing. You know, these things will be going for crazy on eBay. I think you can actually make double to triple your money if you do manage to get one. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. If these rumors are right, it will be so limited. It will be crazy. Crazy. But he said that the actual launch time frame will be in October, November. So you might not be able to get one until almost Christmas, right in that area. I mean, that's going to be a bummer, but it will probably be worth the wait. He said Apple doesn't want to sacrifice the quality of the iPhone just to release it earlier. They would rather take their time and actually do full mass production a little bit later just to get it right. He says it won't undermine the actual demand for the iPhone. If anything, it will make it even bigger, just like the AirPods. I mean, people knew it was an amazing product, but it took Apple so long to make and release them. So it's a very similar situation here. And Nikkei is reporting that there are two components to blame for the delayed release of the iPhone 8, one being the organic LED display. Samsung was just not ready for that much demand for it. And another being the updated logic board design. Because it's a new design for a logic board, the circuitry is very compact. They're having an issue with producing enough of those in time. So the organic LED display and logic board are pretty much the reasons why Apple is delaying this thing and not to mention the actual fingerprint sensor solution. And I personally found this one very interesting. Tim Cook has spoke and said that earlier, more frequent reports on future iPhones are having an impact, meaning that a lot of people are getting educated about rumors, upcoming iPhones, and they're withholding their purchase. Say you were looking to get an iPhone 7 Plus, but then you learned that the iPhone 8 is coming out with all this crazy stuff. So the earnings are dropping around this time. And their recent report, uh, their earnings financial report in March, basically said that this is the case. Year over year, sales are falling about this time of the year because of the upcoming iPhones. And rumors, videos like these are having an impact. Kind of crazy. And time for sketchy rumors time. This is the rumors that I saved for last that don't really make much sense, but I still wanted to share with you because they're going around all over the internet. An analyst from JP Morgan is saying that we could be seeing the iPhone 8 as early as June at Worldwide Developers Conference. This totally doesn't make sense. He doesn't really say why, but he says that that might be the case. And if you thought Apple is having a hard time selling iPhones now because of the upcoming iPhone, they would literally be shooting themselves in the foot by announcing the iPhone in June at WWDC and then releasing it later in September or even October or November as reported. So that time in between, nobody's gonna buy an iPhone right now. Definitely not happening, no way, no chance. Also, another sketchy rumor from a Chinese tech website is saying that they have a Foxconn insider that's saying there will not be a third iPhone, there will only be two, an iPhone 8 and an iPhone 8 Plus, saying that Apple decided not to go that route and just more of a traditional release skipping the 7S cycle 
article altogether. He's not saying why, he's not giving any proof. So, you know, this one is probably not happening, but one person is saying only two models of iPhone are happening later this year. And a patent just submitted by Apple would allow for wireless charging over the air. This is initially what was reported to be the iPhone 8's charging technology. Not gonna be happening, but Apple is making strides to make it happen in the future. The interesting thing about it is that it would be possible over regular uh, signals that routers could send, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz signals. So high frequency signals that could actually charge your phone. The actual viability of it, if it's possible, would it be powerful enough to charge it in a timely manner? Those are unknown, but Apple is definitely taking a step in the direction of true wireless charging. And there's a very interesting report from Business Insider that interviewed someone that used to work at a Foxconn uh, factory or Pegatron factory. And what they reported was quite interesting. Apple is really, really stepping up their security when it comes to keeping leaks inside, trying to keep anybody from bringing a camera or any metal for that fact through the security doors of their factories. They actually used to have one metal detector, now they have two. Girls with bras that have metal in them can't even get into that factory, so they have to go and change that. It's kind of interesting. Apple is so trying to clamp down on these rumors, but they can't, and they keep flooding out from everywhere. I mean, I think that's an impossible task altogether, but it might be that in the future, leaks like these that we're seeing might not even happen anymore. In any case, guys, just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. That's the latest on the iPhone 8 rumors and leaks. A lot of great stuff. We're getting really close here. And very soon here, we're going to start to see a lot more component leaks. The cameras, vertical cameras might leak. The display leaks. I'm really excited for that. So I'll be here to share all that with you. Again, if you guys want a chance to win those Jet Black AirPods, do like, comment, and subscribe on this video. And I will be in